Your 20s are a confusing time. Your 20s. Your 20s. 20s. Yeah, your 20s. Their 20s. My 20s. And their 20s. Our 20s. In my 20s. 20. 20 year old self. Oh, to be 21. And I turn 21 soon, which means several things. Birthday depression, which I find really hard. And existential dread. I have been sick for most of the first year of my 20s and I'm terrified I'm gonna waste the next eight years of my 20s. So I'm breaking up my 20s into eight parts so I can tackle them. Spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, financial, academic, vocational, and relational health are all the things that I wanna be able to tackle so that I don't waste my youth and can get rid of this constant feeling of existential dread. This week, we are covering the mental aspect. So, yeah, let, let's see how that goes. I wasn't sure how far back to go, so I thought let's go all the way back to when I had a really, really thick Nigerian accent. I was definitely happy and bubbly and confident. I'm not saying that things have always been terrible, because that's not true. I think probably most of the issues started around the time I was 9 or 10 when my family moved down to Cornwall. <laughs> that doesn't mean that there weren't moments of genuine joy and happiness. I see the way I'm flicking my wrist, you understand? Wow, well, panning. I flick my wrist at point. I'm not like the other girl. And there were some really peaceful moments, especially being outdoors. I found that really therapeutic. And I know I'm privileged, and I know I've had experiences that not everyone has. I consider my family to be my biggest privilege out of everything. But I spent a lot of my childhood and teen years numbing and avoiding a lot of my issues. So this was a lot of supercurriculars, competing nationally and internationally in science fairs, in speech, in debate, in all these different things, successfully, might I add. It meant studying a lot. and it meant working out. Languages. <laughs> Superficial self-care. All of these different things. Because it's meant to be so powerful, I actually will because normally I leave face masks on for like a million hours, which I don't think is a good idea. Birthday depression and seasonal depression are why winter has always been the hardest for me. And not much has changed. So, because I use studying as my main coping mechanism, that was the tethering point of my security. When it comes to things outside of academia, like looks, personality, I was never confident in that. That was just the way things were. So, when it got to the point that I was getting rejected by Harvard, by Oxford, and then twice by Imperial, this took a really big toll on my mental health. Ah! Okay, I'm 
logging in to King's Apply to see what they say. <sighs> what they said, view application updated. <gasps> oh my gosh, I got it. I got a conditional offer to study medicine at King's. Mad. Mad. If I'm being really honest, it took me about 18 months to recover from this. I wasn't sleeping and my sleep pattern is still messed up because of this. I was crying every night and even when I started medical school I was still crying about it because it meant that I actually am not that smart, I'm not intelligent, I'm not capable and I'm still working on fixing my mindset because I genuinely don't think I'm intelligent and I'm having to gaslight myself into believing that again. When it comes to FOMO, my mindset has been just as toxic. I will do amazing things and then I will gaslight myself and minimize it. I made a literal scientific discovery. I'm literally working on publications I'm so proud of. And I tell myself that it's not that deep. If I could do it, anyone could do it. And if anyone could do it, it's not special. I'll do something and then I end up craving the opposite. For example, when I was in the States, I was living by myself and I didn't like having to take out bins. I don't like bills. All of that stuff is stressful. But I was feeling really envious of the people who just had big friendship groups that could all move in together. And when I was doing really impressive academic work and research in working in the lab, I was jealous of the people who were traveling. When I was traveling the next summer, guess what? I was feeling FOMO because I felt like I was wasting my summer and I was feeling like actually I should just be doing academic work. When we talk about fears, the, the list goes on and on and on. I'm scared that I won't live up to my potential. I'm scared that the talents that God has given me, I won't actually use. And when I die, he's going to ask me, so what did you do with them? I'm scared that I'm secretly lazy and I'm scared that the best I can do isn't good enough. I know that these things are not correct, but I don't feel that. I don't feel that at all. So I've only been in my 20s for 10 months. However, in that time I have taken several trips and I have nurtured amazing friendships. I have learnt a lot and grown a lot, not just academically. I'm also unlearning a lot of things as well. I can confidently say that this past year has been better than the last 12 years combined, especially when it comes to my mental health. I said that I was sick for most of my 20s, but honestly it's only been three or four out of the 10 months so far and I know I need to become more optimistic, so I'm working on that. I never thought that happiness would be for someone like me and every day I start to believe in it just a little bit more. I spent a lot of the end of my teen years getting lots and lots of therapy and I'm finally starting to apply all of the things that I've learnt. I don't know what the rest of my 20s are going to look like or even what I want them to look like. I used to have my plans and my goals and my aspirations but they were all based on me going to specific academic institutions. Evidently that didn't happen. Right now, honestly, I'm trying to take each moment as it comes because doing more than that is painful. I'm too scared to have big dreams and goals because I'm worried that I won't reach them again and I'll have this constant crushing pain of rejection. I do know I want my mental health to look a lot better than it has previously and I'm on the right track. I'm going to apply everything that I've learned in therapy and also I'm going to try to do more deep transcendent self-care. I want to have more self-compassion, more self-love and take better care of myself.
when I eat healthy food, I deserve to eat. If I eat unhealthy food, I don't deserve to eat and I need to punish myself in the gym again and again and again.